Forestwoods Media brings you 20th century poets. Listen to this minute commentary on William Meredith, poetry consultant, U.S. Poet Laureate, to the Library of Congress, 1978 to 1980. I'm Grace Cavalieri. It is said that hope is something not seen, or it would not be hope. William Meredith must believe very much in what is not apparently visible to others, as he is a poet of hope, optimism, even when confronting painful issues like racism and injustice. In fact, one of his books is entitled The Cheer. In the 1980s, a year after suffering a heart attack, he was heard on the telephone saying, We're in bad health but high spirits. William Meredith, when asked about the lack of despair that shadows other poets, admits in believing in salvation, although he does not practice Christianity conspicuously, he says. William Meredith is still an active poet. He lived at the center of the intellectual life of our country during the mid-20th century, a friend of Randall Jarrell, John Berryman, opera-goer with Robert Lowell, sometimes companion to mentor Robert Frost and W.H. Auden, another influence, and Muriel Rukeyser, whom he admired very much. The Meredith family dates back to ancestry in 18th century America and are shown on a piece of 19th century American currency, a 10-cent note. The dignity and modesty of William Meredith has roots in an old-fashioned sense of social decorum, courtliness, and manners. But he has a progressive heart, radical in his time, a champion of the rights of minority others, and it's found in his poetry. The main focus of William Meredith's work is to find the energy of speech rather than the rhetoric of language. He speaks in defense of the human tribe, its language, its prosody. This is one reason why the literary world was stunned when William Meredith suffered a stroke in 1983, losing his own speech. It took 10 years before he regained use of the word. His lifetime companion is a physician's assistant as well as a poet and is credited to nursing William to health. If there is an attitude underlying Meredith's writings, it is to weigh the alternatives of any idea or situation. His criticism gives wide berth to appreciation even of those things he does not love. He says art recognizes alternatives, propaganda does not. William Meredith's persona poems from the book Hazard the Painter, illuminate Frost's belief that everything written is as good as it is dramatic. And Hazard is a good example of the dramatic poem. Although he claims not the author's own character, since Hazard voices beliefs that vary from his creator, often in order to create a poetic argument. These poems have been termed a miniature novel in verse. Meredith insists he has limited imagination. In fact, that his dream life is as orderly as his waking life. But he is a poet of insight, and this is why his careful work is never out of style and is always as fresh as each morning. William has published a book each decade since his premiere in 1944, yet he writes slowly, six to eight poems a year when in his prime. He wanted poems that were not addressed to the occupant, he says, but rather to William Meredith. The first poem heard aloud by William Meredith after he struggled away from his massive stroke is this one. It's entitled, A Major Work. A Major Work. Poems are hard to read. Pictures are hard to see. Music is hard to hear. And people 
are hard to love. But whether from brute need or divine energy, at last mind, eye, and ear, and the great sloth heart will move. I'm Grace Cavalieri. Funding is provided by the Zynipid Fund. Our producer is Jack Tarashuk. Our engineer is Mike Turpin.